So have you ever thought about why so many ancient, very spiritual groups um, tended to have long hair? Um, you have the Native Americans, you have yogis, and you have um, like the Jewish Nazarites who took a vow and wouldn't cut their hair. And uh, I noticed this year that I had started growing my hair out very long, and I usually cut it quite often, but it was just kind of one of those things. <laughs> and then I started thinking about it. And uh, I just start, started thinking about Yeshua and, you know, the not cutting the hair thing. And then Samson came to mind and, you know, it was said that long hair gave him strength. And I was kind of wondering, you know, what is this all about? Is there something to this? And then like a week later, um, I see this article and I wanted to read it to you because it kind of blew my mind. Hair as an antennae. I laid out electronic circuit boards for a profession. All current creates radio waves, as a matter of fact. Alternating current is changed to direct current by means of a diode. Diodes are either made of selenium or germanium. Fact. Hair follicles contain selenium, and selenium is needed for hair to grow. Hair also needs copper. Also check out copter, or copper peptides. Hair contains copper. It acts as an antennae. Radio waves are received by the hair, converted into DC current by the selenium in the hair follicles. The selenium in the hair follicles can be of varying strengths, therefore even possibly creating some transistors as well. It is my supposition that the current goes directly to the brain, which just happens to be very close to the hair follicles. We are radio receivers. The evidence of the Indians with long hair having an extra, or I would say different sensitivity or awareness, is because of the long hair. If you have short hair, you will be receiving wavelengths of higher frequency. Longer hair will receive lower wavelengths. This is all natural physics and chemical facts. Order followers, such as cops or soldiers, have mandates imposed upon them so that they have their heads shaved. This is not so they can safely brawl under barbed wire or for any other reason. It is to cut them off mm -hmm. from receiving extrasensory perception from their environment. They cannot feel your emotion in the air and do not care. They will rob you and rape you, jail you, kill you, and not think twice because they are blank slates to be programmed and ordered. So when you wonder why cops are so bonkers going out and committing their terroristic acts, you have to realize they are turned off to reality and only take their mental input from a quote-unquote superior, who in fact is a golden idol, and that is statism, their wicked calf of worship. Um... And just a personal note, I don't think all cops are evil, but I do notice it's an interesting thing that, you know, government and uh, military require you to have your head shaved. It has to be for a reason. Um, so, in the Vietnam War, America was not completely, at every level, being run by Zionists, but it is now, and we see this paramilitary force police roaming around our streets completely tuned out of reality. Now they don't care if intuition uh, is present in the soldiers, they rely on technology, drones and missiles, other forms of surveillance, surveillance and the war on information to get what they want. Just keep the order of followers dumb and not asking questions, don't get a sense about anything, just do as you're told. And um, this is what I really wanted to read, was this article right here. The truth about hair covered up since the Vietnam War. Alright, so this information about hair has been hidden from the public since the Vietnam War. Our culture leads people to believe that hairstyle is a matter of personal preference that a hairstyle is a matter of fashion and or convenience, and that how people wear their hair is simply a cosmetic issue. 
Back in the Vietnam War, however, an entirely different picture emerged, one that has been carefully covered up and hidden from public view. In the early 90s, Sally was married to a licensed psychologist who worked at a VA medical hospital. He worked with combat veterans with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Most of them had served in Vietnam. Sally said, I remember clearly an evening when my husband came back to our apartment on, on doctor's circle, carrying a thick official looking folder in his hands. Inside were hundreds of pages of certain studies commissioned by the government. He was in shock from the contents. What he read in those documents completely changed his life. From that moment on, my conservative middle of the road husband grew his hair and beard and never cut them again. What is more, the VA medical center let him do it and other very conservative men in the staff followed his example. As I read the documents, I learned why. It seems that during the Vietnam War, special forces in the War Department had sent undercover experts to comb American Indian reservations looking for talented scouts, for tough young men trained to move stealthily through rough terrain. They were especially looking for men with outstanding, almost supernatural, tracking abilities. Before being approached, these carefully selected men were extensively documented as experts in tracking and survival. With the usual enticements, the well-proven smooth phrases used to enroll new recruits, some of these Indian trackers were then enlisted. Once enlisted, an amazing thing happened. Whatever talents and skills they had possessed on the reservation seemed to mysteriously disappear, as recruit after recruit failed to perform as expected in the field. Serious casualties and failures of performance led the government to contract expensive testing of these recruits, and this is what was found. When questioned about their failure to perform as expected, the older recruits replied consistently that when they received their required military haircuts, they could no longer sense the enemy. They could no longer access a sixth sense, their intuition no longer was reliable. They couldn't mm -hmm. read subtle signs as well or access subtle extrasensory information. So the Testing Institute recruited more Native American trackers, let them keep their long hair, and tested them in multiple areas. Then they would pair two men together who had received the same scores on all the tests. They would let one man in the pair keep his long hair, or keep his hair long, and give the other man a military haircut. Then the two men retook the tests. Time after time, the man with long hair kept making high scores. Time after time, the man with the short hair failed the tests in which he had previously scored high scores. Here is a typical test. The recruit is sleeping out in the woods. An armed enemy approaches the sleeping man. The long-haired man is awakened out of his sleep by a, song, by a strong sense of danger and gets away long before the enemy is close, long before any sounds from the approaching enemy are audible. In another version of this test, the long-haired man senses an approach and somehow intuits that the enemy will perform a physical attack. He follows his sixth sense and stays still pretending to be sleeping, but quickly grabs the attacker and kills him as the attacker reaches down to strangle him. This same man, after having passed these and other tests, then received a military haircut and consistently failed these tests and many other tests that he, that he had previously passed. So the document recommended that all Indian trackers be exempt from military haircuts. In fact, it required that trackers keep their hair long. Additional notes. The mammalian body has evolved over... Okay, I don't believe this part. <laughs> they say evolved over millions of years. Uh, survival skills of human and animal at times seem almost supernatural. Science is constantly coming up with more discoveries about the amazing abilities of man and animal to survive. 
Each part of the body has highly sensitive work to perform for the survival and well-being of the body as a whole. The body has a reason for every part of itself. Hair is an extension of the nervous system. It can be correctly seen as exteriorized nerves, a type of highly evolved feelers or antennae that transmit vast amounts of important information to the brainstem, the limbic system, and the neo neocortex. Not only does hair in people, including facial hair in men, provide an important highway reaching the brain, hair also emits energy, the electromagnetic energy emitted by the brain into the outer environment. This has been seen in Kirlian photography, when a person is photographed with long hair and then re-photographed after the hair is cut. When hair is cut, receiving and sending transmissions to and from the environment are greatly hampered. This results in numbing out. Cutting of hair is a contributing factor to unawareness of environmental distress in local ecosystems. It is also a contributing factor to insensitivity in relationships of all kinds. It contributes to sexual frustration. Conclusion. In searching for solutions for the distress in our world, it may be time for us to consider that many of our most basic assumptions about reality are in error. It may be that a major part of the solution is looking at us in the face each morning when we see ourselves in the mirror. The story of Samson and Delilah in the Bible has a lot of encoded truth to tell us. When Delilah cut Samson's hair, the once undefeatable Samson was defeated. Okay, um, and it was pointed out to me by Barb. Um, she, this was a really great catch. I think, um, you know how they keep showing us, you know, truths hidden in plain sight? Um, well, in the movie Avatar, uh, and everyone made fun of this when the movie came out because it was just so weird, but they had these long braids and at the end of their braids they had like nerve tendrils and these little nerves could combine with other beings of their race and with uh, their like flying companions and stuff and it was like a very spiritual deep connection. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting um, and I guess I'll leave you with that. So love you guys, hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.